What is up, YouTube? Simmer Revolution here, and we are back for the Spanish Nation review. Um, but before this ends, make sure you guys vote for the next civilization. We got France and Japan. But let's get into the civilization bonus. So experience is earned faster. What that basically means is that you get faster shipments. So you'll be able to get like two shipments uh, by age one, which is kind of cool. But as you can see there, my favorite combo is the Lancer and Skirm. And let's see why. So you've probably seen this clip already. But with Unction, these guys are insane combined together. And, um, excuse me, the Lancers especially are one of the better uh, cav units with this Unction. They're so good against infantry, even musketeers, as you'll see in this clip here. Um, and then combined with the Skirmishers, they just knock out infantry like no problem. The Lancers with that card get the bonus against infantry. And um, the Skirms with the attack bonus from the Unction just dominate, <laughs> dominate heavy infantry as you're seeing in this clip. So it was really exciting to see. Um, it was one of my favorite combos. We'll see it a little bit later in this video too. And uh, yeah, just probably one of the best combinations for knocking out um, straight up heavy infantry that I've used. Um, just of how like fast they just mow through them. Um, obviously, your cavalry is going to take some hits if you're going head to head versus like musketeers. But overall, like your skirmishers get to stay back and shoot, and they do so much damage that you don't have any issues um, knocking out other units. So that's really fun, and it's really easy to use. Uh, just having your skirms kind of chill on the back, and if you need to, you can always spawn some dragoons in. But yeah, that's one. That was my favorite combo. Um, second there is the crossbows and pike. And uh, we got a lot of rattle arrows with them as well. But the crossbows and pike were a great combo because of how cheap they were. And um, with the Spanish, you can get the uh, archaic uh, train time, which allows you to train them both very quickly in age two. Um, you can combine that with the, re the uh, regular train time as well. But um, it's a team card as well. So you can get some really good combinations, maybe some longbows uh, quickly trained in there. And it, it allows a one-man... Um, Spanish player to kind of dominate the second age and a lot of people expect you to go fast fortress with Spain so being able to rush extremely effectively is a great card to have and in this next episode that is uh, or this next clip here that is why we won this game is because they expected me to go to a fast fortress but we went to a rush and we were able to put so many troops in there that they had no answer uh, and I've really enjoyed it. It's really fun to mass the guys up, and then even if you have a large number of them, you can get some uh, Unction in there as well, because Unction is a H2 card. So it's really fun, really easy combo. Um, and yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do with Spain. Uh, so overall, the Roleros, let's talk about them for a second. Um, they're a good, decent H2 unit. They're really good at uh, defending your base because they're quicker. And they can catch up with cavalry, and they can like when they engage with the cavalry, they slow down. But uh, I didn't find them very effective past age two. They're they don't have any like cav multipliers like the um the, they're not they don't have multipliers like the uh, coyote runners do, where they act like cavalry. The rattlers are more like a pike instead of a cavalry type unit, if that makes sense. So um, they're not as effective versus uh, villagers and stuff like that. And uh, that's something that they kind of lack. I wish they had, like, maybe a card or something to enhance them in some way. But, um, yeah, they're decent. I mean, I send them in every once in a while because I'll have villagers on coin and we'll have my woods, like, supplies will be low uh, if I'm doing a pike and crossbow um, combination. And then you can send them in kind of as a backup unit. But overall, they were not my favorite. Um, so, yeah, just be aware of that. And uh, this is going to be the clip from the free-for-all match where... We are dominating with this skirm lancer combo, and we'll get some dragons in there too. So this is going to be a pretty long clip. I'm just going to talk about Spain in general um, while this continues. Because you guys have said like in your feedback that you guys want to see gameplay clips um, instead of me just talking on a blank screen. So if you need to, you can go back and pause on the um, screen that I made the image there. But um, yeah, so with the faster shipments, Spain and Unction, I guess, Spain is a lot of fun because they're very open to what strategies you can do with them. And because they're overall, they're just, I, I like Spain is like overall just average at the base, but because of Unction, they excel in any way you want them to. And because of the shipments, you can really diversify your strategies. Um, so if, for example, if you want to do a really good rush, that is extremely possible. You can easily get um, several cards in before the opponent maybe gets two, you can have four in. 
and um, or you could go like with advanced trade post and you can get more uh, shipments in, which is kind of crazy. So you get even faster. But um, with that, you can get a really strong Russian. I did it in one of my videos. You can get a solid Russian. Um, but at the same time, if you like Fast Fortress, which is what Spain is more known for, especially in the vanilla, you can easily do that, of course. And because you have those extra shipments, you can send in a lot more Fast Fortress units um, much quicker as well. So then you have a stronger Fast Fortress attack too. Um, and then if you want to do like more of a boom, like a water boom, you can do that with Spain as well because they have a great, great, great navy. Probably one of the better navies in the game because of how many navy cards they have. Uh, if you watch this free-for-all match, you saw how dominant my navy was and uh i mean i didn't have too much contesting but they still did a great job uh overall so i mean you could go that route as well but really anything you want to do spain can generally do it they don't really have a land boom um there's no like benefit for that they don't have shrines or houses or anything like that uh but overall they have really diverse like um means of getting strategies that you want because of how many cards you can send in so like if you want to send unction in h2 you can go ahead and do it and it's not going to hurt you because you'll have so many other cards you can send in uh so it's really neat it's fun to play with them if you have not played with spain i'd totally do it and just try to like make your own strategies with them and uh go around some different cards and kind of build yourself around that it's a lot of fun um and it kind of makes you feel like a little bit different in comparison to other civs but at the same time, it's really funny because they're so basic. The only unique units they have is a Lancer, which is insane, and the uh, Rods. But they still feel uh, very, like, mold moldable. And that would be my, like, go-to word for Spain is that they're a very moldable Civ in any way you want to play. Uh, and that's fun. I enjoy doing that. I like Civs that can do that. And uh, they're fun to do that for sure. Um, there was a gameplay clip on this that I used the Dragoons and... Um, they were just going toe to toe with Portugal's dragoons, and they are basically the same. So with Unction, Spain is unreal. There's they can go toe to toe with any like unit on the other side. So like for example, um, how Portugal has the best dragoons in the game. Obviously, they have more range, but going toe to toe just straight up, they can do just as much damage as the Portuguese dragoons, which is kind of cool. And I'm sure I was missing uh, so like some cav attack cards too. Um, but same thing, like they'll have their skirms are in, insane when they have the unction. Their musketeers are insane when they have the unction. Um, pikes, imperial pikes, they have also, which are fun to use. Age five, I don't really use them that much, just because I normally rely on coin armies once I get later in the game. But uh, if you like using wood or wood armies late in game, you could totally do that with Spain as well. So just a very moldable sieve, fun to use. They're strong wherever you really put them um if you like certain strat like if you like cannons i'm sure spain would be insane with a bunch of cannons that i i haven't tried it but i think it would be lots of fun uh and you could totally do that as well so that's just kind of like my overall look at them let's go look at the pros and the cons now and we'll kind of continue to talk a little more in depth here so pros as i was saying is that they have an extremely strong rush because of how many cards you can send in and uh like with that you can at send in resources if you want to you can send the train times if you want to and get your units out quicker you can send in units you can send an unction there's so many things that you can do that it just it's really awesome and you can do a bunch of different rush strategies there's there's probably an infinite amount of strategies you could do rushing just with spain and so that's that's fun to do that's awesome at the same time they also have a good fast fortress which is great because your opponent might not know what to do most people uh, anticipate fast fortress with spain so that's why i think a rush is pretty fun but um maybe after this video everyone's gonna be expecting rushes now so we'll see but the uh, fast fortress is great because you can send in a ton of h3 units uh along with your age up so that's pretty cool too um the next one there unction adds diversity so kind of what i was saying it adds some moldability to them if you like playing a certain way with the unction you'll be able to do that and you'll be able to excel. So if you like Dragoons, you can use Dragoons with Spain. You're just not going to have the range the Portuguese will have. You'll have an insanely good Dragoon unit still. Or if you like using Crossbows and Pikes, you can get um, Unction with Crossbows and Pikes. So however you'd like to do that. Um, and then the Quick Shipments, obviously, that's also much needed for the diversibility. If you like Eco, you can send a bunch of wood or um, coin cards. You can do any of that stuff. Uh, and get really get your eco going, especially like age three. One of their cards I can't 
think of it. It's like colonial estates or something like that, where you get uh like an extreme population boost from your town centers. Such a great card to have, and it doesn't hurt you because Spain has so many cards, or they get they get to send in so many cards that you can just send it in on the fly, and it won't hurt you, and you won't have to make any houses. So it saves you what like fifteen hundred wood. Like it's it's pretty awesome. Um, so that's cool. Uh, amazing navy and water. So. Their navy, obviously, with their insane galleon cards, um, which we do, we'll need to do at some point. We'll definitely get like some really good Spanish navy gameplay in. That's what I was kind of trying to do with the free for all, but it didn't work out. Uh, but yeah, they have some insane navy cards, and their war boom is good as well to, with that because they have the schooner card, so they can um, rule the oceans very easily. And lancers are obviously great. They're so good taking out heavy infantry. They're <laughs> insane versus light infantry. Like if you have skirmishers, dude, and lancers are coming at you, it's over. Like if they, especially if there's unction, it's it's like a one hit kill. Um, so that's fun to do. They're great H three. They they are an H three unit. You can't get them H two. Um, so that's one reason that people do the fast fortress is so they can get those lancers. Um, so yeah, that's another really good perk for them. And then additionally, they have the war dogs, which is it's probably not gonna seem like a lot, but if you like harassing your opponent. Early on, like if you're gonna rush and you want to get some harassment going, toss out five war dogs right on some villagers, and <laughs> that'll get them going. Like I, I don't really want to encourage that because it's really annoying to play against, but it is effective and it is a strategy and it's in the game, um, and it is an advantage that Spain has. So I had to point it out. Um, so that's cool too. And then additionally, with that, you can get treasures very easily because of the war dogs and your explorer. So that's cool there too. So going into the cons now is that they need cards um, and they need unction. Like it's, <laughs> it's uh, like the pros are the cons. Like your greatest weakness is your, or your greatest strength is your weakness as well. Um, and this is especially true with Spain. Is so they need cards to be effective. If they didn't have those fast playing cards, you couldn't mold them in a certain way. There was no true strength to them. Maybe the lancers, but other than that, there's no true strength. Um, so that's really why they need them is to get that little edge. And then Unction is additionally much needed, especially late game. So when Spain struggles most of the time, I found was like Fortress going into Industrial if I didn't have Unction. Um, because their economy is not the best, and that's the other con. Because their economy isn't amazing, they don't really have a true boom. Um, they really need something to get them equal to the opponent. And because, like, so, for example, if my economy isn't the best, I'm not going to be able to pump out as many troops as, let's say, I'm playing, like, Great Britain. If I'm playing the British, he is going to have probably way more resources than me if he has his housing boom in already. Um, and I don't have anything, like, going for me yet. So, the counter that, you can know, send in the unction, and my troops are going to have the higher attack. So, they'll be able to fight off um, a greater quantity, basically. So, it's quality over quantity with Spain, if that makes sense. Um, unless you're doing like crossbows and pikes and you can mass those pretty well, but you gotta be very careful, obviously. Um, they're pretty weak, but, uh, if you use properly together, they're a great combination. That's kind of what I was saying there. Um, but yeah, so that's the cons really. Um, I mean, I guess another con would be they're not, there's no true like uniqueness to them, but that's kind of, it's kind of what Spain is. They're very moldable. Um, if you like playing a certain way, try doing it with Spain and give it a shot, give it like three or four matches. I like them in team games. I think they're fun. Uh, and by themselves, they're pretty fun too. As long as you have a strategy that you know you're going to implement, uh, I think you could use it pretty effectively. But at the same time, if you need to switch something, so let's say like you obviously you have your Lancer cards. Well, let's say the opponent, he's sending in Cav all the time. You can easily just switch Dragoons or Musketeers. And because of Unction, you'll have extremely effective Dragoons and Musketeers. So that re that way they're kind of diverse in a uh, different area as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's my review of Spain. So very interesting sieve, very moldable, um, but they need their cards and their unction to be effective in my opinion. And that is kind of where their strength is. They're fun to use because of that. Um, and yeah, I would definitely give them a shot uh, and let me know what you guys think of them. I know a lot of people think they're better in vanilla than they are in the Asian dynasties and they don't have unction in the vanilla. Um, so I'll be interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, let me know as always, and then I'll see you guys in the next video.